Welcome to a day in the life as a UTSA Roadrunner. We've got a lot going on, so try and keep up. First things first though, we need some coffee. We got a big day coming up, lots to show you. Here we are walking up to Indy. It's in Prado, so it's like right next to UTSA Boulevard and here's University Oaks. Right next to campus, so it's a really quick way to get a drink before you go do lots of homework and such. Hey, how's it going? Good. Lots of great choices. I got my coffee. Now I'm headed to campus. I've got a tour at 11 o'clock, so we gotta get going. I'm walking to the Welcome Center right now to pick up a, a student to give him a tour of the engineering building, the maker space, and the AET. Um, I'm an engineering ambassador and basically what I do is I give people tours of UTSA's engineering facilities, show them around and kind of hype up the school. It's a great opportunity to, to meet new people and share, uh, share the school, share what I love. You know, I'm really passionate about engineering, so it's a, it's a great experience to be able to share that with other incoming freshmen. Gosh, dang, it is a nice day out here though. Alrighty, so I just got my students and we're about to go on a tour of the engineering facility. So are you guys excited? Yes. All right, Connor's not excited. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay, here we are at the College of Engineering Tutoring Center. This is a place to be if you want to study with your friends or get help from other tutors. The tutors in there are super knowledgeable. They know exactly, uh, they've taken the classes before and they've all gotten A's in the difficult classes. So it's super helpful. I'm here in the makerspace at UTSA, and look at all these 3D printers. So many 3D printers. So some, most of these use filament deposition, and this guy down here uses two different filaments at the same time. So you can do supports or different colors. Super cool. And check out this. Look at this chain now. So this just came right off of the 3D printer, and look at this. There's no assembly required. They just hit print, and like, it creates these beautiful different patterns. And there's also these resin-based printers, and these create really, really great quality prints. Uh, I don't see anything around at the moment, but these are str super strong, and you can also print with like carbon fiber and stuff. The tour went really well. I think Connor really enjoyed it. I think he's super excited about the engineering program at UTSA, so that makes me super happy. And now I'm headed to a lab. Uh, it's for micro. Final project, so I'm gonna go work on my final project for a little bit. And I'll show you what I'm working on, so. I finally got my project working, so here's what it does. So you're first given this little home screen, and then when you press the button, it takes you into this menu, so you can choose from programs. You press the button again, moves down to settings, press it again, now you can select analytics, photo sensor, and then it cycles back to the top. Okay, and so whenever you do a long hold like this, it takes you into that menu. So here's a programs menu, and then you press a button again to go back. Settings, long hold, and then there's a settings menu, and then back to the top. So that is my final project done. Uh, now I'm headed to the lab. I've got quite a bit of homework, and I've got a final project to work on. And also, I'm gonna show you what I've been working on. Here I am at the MEMS lab. It's time to get started. But first, more coffee. Okay, I got my coffee. These are all my lab mates. This is Raul. I don't know what they're working on. Janeth. Okay, and here's my desk. You can see I've got uh, the snacks. I got some Pringles here too. These are essentials for studying hard, especially for finals week. I'm gonna check my emails really quick and then I'll take y'all into the lab. When you go inside the lab, you need to put on uh, a bunny suit, gloves, a hairnet, glasses, a mask, and booties on your shoe. And this is just so that way the, the space stays clean and free of any particles that might fall off of you. 
All right, here we go, big reveal. Boom. So here's the clean room. Basically, all of this equipment is for processing semiconductors to make solar cells. So we got fume hoods, we've got hot plates with stirs, we've got all sorts of chemicals. Lots of chemicals. More chemicals. And all this is necessary for manufacturing solar cells and creating different coatings on them. So this here is for um, plasma cleaning, microscope, uh, thermal evaporator. So basically what this does is this melts aluminum in a, in a very, uh, in a vacuum proof container and then it sublimates to a surface and you can create different patterns on it using masks. Okay, now let's go to the lithography room. We've got a sputtering device, microscope, um, plasmonic cleaner. Basically what this does is it creates this sound and then it transmits it through the water. You can see it's kind of like vibrating the water. And that can like mix solutions at the particle level. This has got to be the coolest device right here. It's for making spectroscopy measurements and basically it creates different polarizations of light using this. It transmits it through this fiber optic cable through here. And then at different angles, you put your sample on this piece here. It detects it and it, it can tell you like things like thickness or index of refraction. This, this dinosaur here is called a profilometer. And basically what you do is you cut your sample and then it looks at the cut in the sample. And it can tell you like how deep the cut is basically. Here's a furnace. This thing can go to over 1100 degrees Celsius, super hot. And here's where we do all the solar cell processing in this one particular fume hood. Okay, now we're gonna go out to this other area. So we've got lots of glassware storage. I'm just gonna turn the lights on. Like glass, glass storage, uh, all the nitrogen. So for like the nitrogen air guns and for the spin coder. And then we have a bunch of equipment for characterizing solar cells. So this is for measuring efficiency. It kind of like simulates the sun. And I'll show you what the solar cells look like when they're all done. So this top bus bar here is where is the positive side and then the underside of the solar cell is the negative side. And basically you hook it up to this device and it will measure how efficient the solar cell is. Okay, then we've got this device here that measures absorption. It's pretty small compared to the rest of the equipment. And this here can measure external quantum efficiency. And it takes a little while to set up, but it's really cool and helpful. For my research project, what I do is I, I, when I fabricate these solar cells, I put on different optical coatings. You can see this one is kind of purple in the center and bluish on the edges. And I basically, I get these coatings from the leaves of spinach plants. So I extract chlorophyll A from spinach. Uh, this here is a dehydrated sample of spinach. And I mix it with another chemical and I apply it to the surface and then I measure the change in efficiency. After a long day of doing research and working on homework and school stuff, it's time to go home. Yeah, thanks for coming along with me in the day in the life of a UTSA roadrunner. My name is Michael Whitley and I'll see you in the next one.